This is an introduction to indices, or rather index notation, exercise 6a on page 3, 6a. Same as what we've done in previous concepts, we're going to use algebra to represent something we don't know. It's always going to be the case. And we'd like to use the letter x. I have no idea why we use x, but that's just the letter we use, right? So we're using x to represent something we don't know. We're pretty familiar with the more basic stuff of linear stuff. So for example, if I said 3x is 4, you could probably figure out what x is. Right? If I said, if I have 3 of this thing, it gives me that, that's pretty straightforward. But it gets very complicated as soon as we start using powers. If I said some number times by that number itself again gives you another number, all of a sudden it gets very confusing. So right now, I think this is the tip for me, this is the tipping point where algebra starts to make more sense than just trying to figure out with that algebra. In this scenario, imagine that you have won a prize. Okay? You don't need to write this down, but just imagine you won a prize. Hayden, would you prefer a thousand dollars right now? I give you cold hard cash, a thousand bucks. Or I give you one cent, not that it's possible. Let's say I have Y in one cent. The next day I wire you two cents, then four cents. Etc. Right? Keep doubling. It's only 20 days though. Which one would you prefer? And be honest. Probably the first one. Probably the first one, because you would be able to do stuff with the thousand dollars, right? You'd go ahead and spend the money on something. Whereas if I for the first five days give you like what amounts to less than a dollar, it's not very helpful, is it? Yeah? But you can probably try and figure out the calculations thank you. Calculations behind that if you wanted to. Again, it can get very complicated, but that would increase very quickly. What I want you to do is I want you to write down just what's in this white box. I'll zoom in for you. I'll get you to write down what's in that white box section there. So the expanded form, index form stuff there as well. Unfortunately, as it is with the start of these lessons, we're just going to write down the definition so it makes sense for us. These words at the bottom, I'm going to keep coming back to those. There is three, oh sorry, five twos. Some of those definitions, I won't get you to write down them, the, the meanings. It's just so that you know what they mean as I go through them. Oh, just run down what's in that white box there. Okay. If I said this one right here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's pretty easy. You might have to think about it for a while, or you just put in your calculator, but it's pretty easy. You could figure that out. But as soon as we put 2 to the power of 5, it gets very confusing sometimes. So if it works for you, you're more than welcome to switch from this, what we call index form, into expanded form, which is what we're more familiar with. That's fine. There's no interpretation for you to have to be able to do that in your head, for example. Uh, so that's index form, because it's some number to a power of another number. And then you've got just the number itself. That would be whatever you get out of the calculator. That's your basic number. Okay. Are there any questions so far? This one right here, I want you to focus on the index form thing right here. The base is the mathematical term we use to describe the number that we are multiplying by. So in this case, I'm saying 2 times 2 times 2, whatever it is. 2 is the base. Because that's just how many, what number I'm multiplying by. And that power, of course, is the index, which tells me how many times I'm multiplying by itself. Squared is an index. Cubed is an index as well. Squared just means times by itself once. Cube means times by itself another time. Right. If I said 2 cubed, it would be 2 times 2 times 2. That's pretty straightforward. So, as a formal definition, not that I need you to write it down, but indices, which is the plural, or an index can be used to represent a product of the same factor. That's just a formal term. You don't have to write that down. The base is the factor. Like I said, the base is just the number there. And then there's three different words for some reason, but you'll probably be more familiar with this one right there. Exponent, index, power, they all mean the same thing. Power of you know, the number that time number of times the base is written. That's all that means. You know? So two to the power of five is two times two, etc. So they have five twos. The same thing would apply if I have numerals. X times x times x times x would be x to the power of four because it's four. Then you just times. That's it. Yeah. So that's our basic index indices there. 
What I want you to do is I want you to copy down these three examples. I'm going to go through them step by step so that we understand what the process is. It in itself is pretty easy, but you need to know what those rules are. We're, following, we're just following a bunch of rules. We're no longer following formulas, but we're following a bunch of rules. So write them down first, those examples there. I'll zoom in for you. There we go. I'm going to write this down. So we've got 5 cubed, negative 2 to the power 5, and 2 over 5 to the power 3. Alright, so for the first one, it's 5 cubed. It's 5 is the base, and 3 is the power. So that would be the same as saying 5 times 5 times 5. Remember, my base is the bottom. It's the number I'm multiplying. Now, I could put that in the calculator. I'll just tell you. It's 125. So this one right here, that's our index form. That's our expanded form. And this one here is our basic numeral. And the names are quite intuitive. Oscar, any questions? Damien, questions? So we're starting with the values themselves first, uh, and then we'll move on to the pronual or the algebra side of it, because it can get quite quick, tricky, a little bit quickly. The next one, here's a mistake a lot of students make. I'm going to write down the mistake, and then I want you to see if you can figure it out. Don't copy down what I'm writing. The mistake that students make is this. All right, it's negative 2 to the power of 5, so 2, oh, so negative 2, and this is the power of 5, so I'm going to times it by 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, so there are 5 of them. What, what have I done wrong? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There needs to be a negative there. Because it's negative 2 to the power of 5. So I'm times in negative 2 by itself 5 times. You can copy that down now, thank you. Now, coincidentally, in this case, it would have given you the same answer. Now I have to try and figure out what 2 to the power of 5 is. Uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So, it's going to be equal to... 32. Instead of trying to figure out, right, instead of trying to figure out negative, okay, negative times negative, then times a negative, times a negative again, times a negative, I'm just going to figure out how many negatives there are. There are five negatives, right? It's an odd number. It means it's going to be a negative. Negative 32. Done. That's it. Any questions so far? I am going through this a little bit slower because I really want us to have a strong foundation for this. Chris, question? Okay. Last one, same understanding. I want you to copy down 2 over 5 times 2 over 5 times 2 over 5. To be clear, we're doing this the long way. There are rules for us to be able to do this the short way, but we're, not, we're going to learn them next week. For now, I just want you to understand what they are first, and then we'll go through the rules later on. So two power two two over five sorry two power three that actually ties in really closely to measurement. If I was trying to figure out the volume of a cube that had the side length of two over five or zero point four, that's that's how I'd do it. If I didn't have a calculator, that's how I'd do it as well. So continue on with that. Well, I just multiply them. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, two over five times two over five times two over five, etc., is going to give me. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Oh, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Thank you very much. 125, that's it, I'm done. That's it. So that first step of writing it out in expanded form helps out a lot. You don't need to, though. Again, like I said, there are rules that help us do this quicker, but for now, we're just understanding the process. Any questions before I go into the last bit of this exercise? Okay. Prime factorization, you guys have done in year seven, but I'm going to go through it again because I'm assuming you've had better things to do with your life in the last two years. So, very briefly, prime factorization. Prime just means prime numbers. What are prime numbers again? Ask, oh, what's a prime number? Give me an example. Kind of like a gross number, right? If I said six, is that a nice number to you? I think it's a nice number. If I said 12, that's a nice number. So it's 7 prime. Seven's a prime number. Why is 7 a gross prime number? Because nothing fits into it. 
Yeah. So prime numbers is where the only factors are one in itself. Any number that you feel that comes off that sounds really gross, like for example, 11, 13, 17, 23, these are all really, I, I personally have like an emotional response when someone's uh, say that, see number 23, it's gross. This number, number doesn't go into it. You don't ask anyone, what's your favorite number? And they say 23, right? But those numbers are your prime numbers. For example, Chris, what's your favorite number? Three. Your favorite number is three? Okay. Barring three, Gabe, what's your favorite number? Also a bad example, but these numbers, two and three, would go into other numbers a lot. Like for example, four, six, etc. 13, 17, 23, these are not nice numbers, they're prime numbers. So we want to break down our values, our really large numbers, into these prime numbers. Okay? When I say break down, I want them to be separated out by multiple. Okay? For example, four can be separated into two and two, that makes sense. Um, but I want to separate it out like that. In the example that we've got them there, they've got 108, and they're just splitting it up into numbers they know go into 108. I'm going to just jump straight into an example. 48, right? Daniel, give me a number that goes into 48. Any number. 24. Why did you pick 24? Half. When, I, when in doubt, it's an even number, just half it. So I know that 24 goes into 48, and 2 as well. I'll get you to copy down this the tree part I'm drawing down. Okay, now Hayden, give me a number that goes into 24. Any number. Pick a card, any card. Two. two, easy. Again, when in doubt, half it. So that gives us two, and half of 24 is 12. Good. Tamika, give me a number that goes into 12. Six, six easy. So I'm going to have six, and I'm going to go two here. The way I'm drawing it out isn't really important. Yeah, I, I'm never going to assess you and say, well, the six should have been there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to care about that. We're just doing this to visualize what our prime factorization is. Luke, number goes into six. Three. Easy, three. So I'm going to say two and three. You can see how every time the numbers in the same row multiply to the number that won from before. So for example, two times three is six, two times six is 12, etc. Now, Max, I'm going to give you a trick question. What goes into three? Give me another that goes into three. Mm. Three is kind of gross, isn't it? It's a prime number already. The only way you can get a nice factor of three is to say one or three. But then, and don't copy this down, please. You end up with this. All right, well, three, three breaks down into one and three. Oh, but then you have three, three breaks into one and three. Oh, but then you have three and three breaks. You get what I'm saying, right? There's no point doing that. They're already prime numbers. Don't bother with this. What I want you to do now is I want you to circle the ends of your tree. So you're gonna circle this number, this number, this number, this number, and this number. Question. Are you sure? Okay. Those are your prime numbers. Your tree might look different from mine. It does not have to look like mine. It can look like something else. But the ends of your tree are going to be your prime. So I'm going to double check that all my values are prime numbers. Twos and threes. Good. I'm going to say that 48, that's the number I started with, equals, yeah, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And when I get them from, I'm just multiplying the numbers I've circled. That's it. From there, well, how many 2s do I have? I have 4 of them. I'm going to put that into index form. So 2 to the power of 4 times 3. And you can check that in your calculator if you want to. You don't need to, but you can if you want to. It's the same thing. We're just writing in a different form. Are there any questions about that? Okay. I want everyone to do one more example. I want you to do the number 128 for me. 